Welcome to our XConnect series on XBF server roles. Today, Todd Mitchell will introduce the collection service. So the first service is Omnichannel Collection. Uh, this is what you'll consider XConnect. Uh, this is a new server role we've introduced into the platform itself, and it is about collecting data. You can collect, to, you can connect to it using our XConnect client API, um, and this is where we handle our single unified view of the customer. Uh, we now support multiple identifiers for an individual, which means you can have, um, you can identify a person by, say, their Nomad account, but you can also identify them by their Facebook identifier and their Twitter identifier, all for the same record. Um, in our previous platform, we support Facet Technology, which allows you to decorate a contact, uh, but we are now also support Facet Technology on the interaction itself, which means you can have an interaction that's about a scuba dive right next to an interaction that was about the purchase for the tour for that scuba dive. You can collect that in any, in any, any shape you want. Um, we've also changed the platform so that rather than collecting what looks like a web visit where you have um, a web visit with page views and page events, this very hierarchical structure. Now everything is just an event. So this matches across multiple channels. We have another interesting feature called calculated facets. These are like miniature aggregations. So if I want to, if I'm nomad and I want to keep a total count of the number of tours that a contact has taken, then every time that they take, every time they book a tour, we can look for that one event and we can plus one on the number of tours they've taken. If you think about this from the lifetime of a customer, and gamification, you can easily calculate personalization conditions or segment conditions that allow you to um, show particular pieces of content or include contacts in the segment that are over 100 tours, right? And that can be built into the system so that no matter where that interaction comes in from, if they've tagged that one event, then we'll trigger that calculation. Another example I talked about was the platform's extensible in that because we have a central point of collection, uh, you can send commands or send requests that the user sends into the platform. If they say, I want to execute right to be forgotten, you can distribute that to some other system that wants to respond to it. Now, this may seem like a, 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 a sort of a small feature, but if you think about it from a compliance standpoint, it allows you to stay compliant with GDPR and PII uh, very easily because you have a central point of knowing when someone said, I want you to forget, forget about who I am. Now this collection role itself is off the kernel. It's basically a web API now. Uh, it supports our data on the layer, as I mentioned before, and you can scale it up and out, which means you can put it behind a load balancer and support multiples of these. Um, what we found when importing millions of contacts and millions of interactions uh, was that that process was actually mostly CPU bound, processing the data before we stored it. And so we found that scaling up with multiple collection servers allowed us, allowed us to get a lot more throughput in. Um, this is your abstraction layer. We support SQL 2016 as, uh, Service Pack 1, which you guys know already. Uh, we also support SQL Azure for this layer. And as of 9.0 Update 1, we will support MongoDB. So um, just as an aside, when customers come online and they decide they want to keep their Mongo investment, they'll have to wait till Update 1, but we provide a conversion tool that allows you to go from the old version to the new version. And the internal structure has completely changed uh, between the two versions of Mongo. So um, you need to use our conversion tool for that rather than just copying the database over. No significant changes in the global uh, distribution story. That means you still host XDB, uh, that's to say XP somewhere central in the world and you have your content delivery environment call back to that. Now, I know some people have bumped into issues in Australia where you wanted to host um, say XDB in Europe and then load contacts into Australia. What we have done is improve the API so that you can load uh, individual facets of contacts, so it reduces your latency. And there's a configuration in our tracker, uh, this is all documented as well, that allows you to say, I want um, the personal information and I want their membership level facets to be loaded by default when you start a new web session, uh, rather than the whole contact record. And you can just patch into that with your products. 